It's been really good. Um, I woke up and I went to IHOP with um, Brenna, Bridey, Shayla and Logan, um, my teammates from when I was here. Um, good dorms. And I met with Lauren and Kyra and some of the girls on the team. And just they showed me their rooms and uh, we shared stories. <laughs> and yeah, and then we came here. Um, I just, yeah, I built really strong friendships here and um, I just feel I'll always be connected to her. Yeah, so when I was growing up, I have five brothers, so my brothers all played and uh, my mum just wanted to put us all in the same sport because it was easier to, <laughs> for transportation. Um, so I just played basketball when I, I started playing when I was five. Um, I guess like I just loved it from the beginning. I was so excited for game day. Like I would wait all week for Saturdays, which is the day we played back home. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then when I got older, uh, I'd say when I got like eighth grade, tenth grade is when like I knew that I it wanted I wanted it to be um, my career. Mm -hmm. um, the coaches here probably the most just because um, growing up. I wasn't always like the best. I wasn't the best. I was, um, I was like probably like the second best, like the third best in my city. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so when I got here, I felt like the coaches, and I couldn't play here, so it, it was probably a lot different compared to any other um, student athlete. But when I got here, I felt like the coaches really believed in me, and they told me like they would help me get to a Division One school, and like. <clears throat> I just felt like I improved a lot while being here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, um, as if I was playing. So I still had to practice. I still had to wake up at 6 a.m. for summer workouts. I still had to do everything except for play. So I think it really did get me prepared for Division I. Um, yeah, it did. Like, I, when I went to Division I, I knew, like, that the school here has prepared me mm -hmm. and, um, helped me succeed at the next level. Um, it sucked not being able to play, but um, you know, I think it's shaped me into the player I am now. So I was recruited by Oklahoma State, Virginia Tech, NC State, UMass, USC in California. Um, I was recruited by a lot of schools. Um, and I decided to go to Syracuse because I just felt like it was a good fit for my game. Um, they like to push the ball in transition, and they like to uh, shoot lots of threes. And I don't know, I just felt like it was a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. um, I never pick a school. Um, you know, I'm over in America for basketball. Mm -hmm. um, so I never pick a school for the weather or, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, w I would always pick it for basketball that's specific. Or it's like, you know, because that, that's the reason why I came to America in the first place. Um, I played for Syracuse for two years. Um, summer of 2019 was uh, when I got a phone call saying that I had breast cancer. Um, but yeah, the first two years I was playing there were like amazing. I improved a lot from my first year to my second year. Like, um, I improved a lot. And so I was getting ready for my last year of eligibility and yeah so summer of 2019 in June was when I found out that I had breast cancer. I had found a lump on my breast uh, in May mm -hmm. and I had I got all the tests and everything done and the beginning of June, June 18th was when um, I got a phone call like from the doctor saying that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. My family, they were very upset. My brothers found it really, really hard um, to stay strong, I would say. And then my mom and dad, they were just like real supportive and told me like whatever, um, like it's gonna be okay and tell me whatever I need, like they'll help me with anything. And really my coaching staff, like Coach Q um, has been amazing, um, like amazing support. Uh, he, um, told like so when I went and told him he told me that he wanted a second opinion mm -hmm. so I actually went to Boston I flew to Bo he uh, flew me to Boston to go to the best doctors up there with his wife and um, 
yeah, we got a second opinion. It was the same result, but it was just good to know that, you know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he said that I can stay in, he said that I can stay in Syracuse and get treatment done and um, SE will support me and help me um, however they can. Was there ever a moment where it was like, I don't know about this? Not really. Um, I would say at the beginning of chemo, just because like I would feel the lump and I'm like, I feel like it's not getting smaller. And, like, mm -hmm. I'd feel it like the next day and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not getting smaller. Like, yeah. <laughs> but um, not really like, I just had a lot of positivity, I would say like around me. Um, the doctors, like I was at the doctors all the time, like and they would reassure me that it's working and that, um, you know, they're very confident that I'm gonna be okay. And so, you know, I trusted in them and believed them. And um, so I think that's what always kept me um, positive and thinking that, you know, it's going to work out, man. Um, when you got the um, cancer free mm -hmm. uh, talk, what was your reaction? Like, how did that liberate yeah. you? So it was after surgery, my first surgery, because they had to check in my lymph nodes to make sure that. Um, it hadn't spread and yeah the doctor had come in and had told me that everything looked great and that um, I'm cancer free um, and it was just a really nice moment it was um, relieving and um, I felt happy and like I don't know just like it was a good day <laughs> when my hair started growing back it was a good like it was good too um, it was hard for me at first to really uh, accept that I had it. Um, I would say the whole time, pretty much throughout their uh, chemo and everything, like I, it wasn't reality to me yet. Like it was still like not real a little bit. Mm -hmm. I hadn't accepted it. So when I found out the news that I was cancer free, because I hadn't, I didn't never accept it. <laughs> it wasn't as amazing as I thought it would be. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it was hard for me to accept in the first place. Yeah. I still tried to do everything. I still played pickup. I still yeah. went out with my friends. I still did everything as if I never had it. So, yeah, when I found out that I was cancer free, obviously I was super happy. But it was just like, Okay, good. Like I, this is what's supposed to happen. You practice every day, or is it just like when you have time? Or yeah. So like, I had surgery November seventh or six, November sixth, and I had another surgery a month ago mm -hmm. for reconstruction, and um, I can start practicing again. So I started practicing in January. Like all of January, I was pretty much practicing, mm -hmm. and then. When did I have my surgery? I think 16th of January. So like the beginning of January, I was practicing the end of December. And then when I had my last surgery, I can, I go to the doctors Monday to get cleared pretty much, to start working out again.